Okay, I am Padmal. I am from Sri Lanka. I am doing electronics and telecommunication engineering as my undergraduate degree. Currently, I have completed my third year. So, I am about to go to fourth year, which is my final year. And after that, I am planning on continuing higher studies. So, maybe going to research. So, during last year GSOC, I joined Forsetia under this uh, pocket science lab project, which was a hardware project, which was suitable for me as I am doing electronics. So, we started from a place and now we are at a very good level, ready to, ready to go for production. So, uh, before starting, you may think that this is another Arduino Mega die project or uh, something similar to Raspberry Pi, but this is actually quite different from those. The different from Arduino Mega is that Arduino Mega is just a bulk board. It, it doesn't come with any software or anything. You have to type a code yourself and upload it and then you uh, set up your circuit using uh, this jumper wires and then only it will work. But with Pocket Science Lab, there is a firmware already uploaded into the board. So all you have to do is install the user application, user interface, and then just there are controls you can get the result from them directly. So we were developing some prototypes during last year. So and we have come up with the final design at the moment. So this was the design you can see in front of us. And to reduce production cost, we have moved all the components to uh, one side. So the manufacturing will be easier and only one step. So this device, you may feel like it's very simple, but actually it offers you a variety of instruments. So one is a four-channel oscilloscope. A four-channel oscilloscope is if you buy an industry grade oscilloscope, it will cost you around six hundred dollars, uh, US dollars, and it's very bulky as well. And it's uh, not so a student may cannot be uh, able to afford such a costly device. So we are trying to replace that and trying to remove that barrier using such a simple device. So the four channel means, in case you don't know, it can view four different waveforms at the same time. And you can have a sampling rate up to two million samples per second, which is quite reasonable in uh, universities and schools. And uh, have a amplitude range from minus two plus to uh, 16 volts. So that can actually replace college oscilloscopes. And then it has a voltmeter. It also has six channels. That means you can measure six different voltages at the same time. And it has uh, programmable voltage sources. That means uh, if you want a certain voltage level for your circuits, if you use a battery, you get a fixed value. But in this one, you can set the range from minus 5 to plus 5. We have three different pin sets. From the maximum from 5 volt to minimum to minus 5, you can have a wide range of voltages with very good accuracy as it's 12 bits. And those are the pins relative to it. And it also has a current source. In many analytical purposes, you will need a current source. And in normal instruments, it's very expensive to use that. And also, it has a logic analyzer. It also has four channels. That is for digital circuit analysis, basically. It supports up to four megahertz frequency ranges. And uh, it has a analog wave generator. It can generate a sine wave as well as a triangular waveform. Uh, frequency is ranging from 
10 hertz to 5 kilohertz. So this is quite affordable range for normal circuit analysis and debugging. And it also has a PWM generator, that means a digital waveform generator. So in Arduino, you have to uh, implement the code yourself. Here we have those pins predefined for yourself. All you have to do is just plug the pin and <coughs> adjust the control in the application in here. And another quite uh, amazing thing is it has capacitance measurement. Uh, in normal multimeters, the capacitance measurement feature is not there. It's in quite expensive multimeters. So we have that feature included in our device ranging from picofarad to microfarads. And also it can measure resistance from milli ohm to mega ohm. And the another amazing thing is you can connect so many sensors to this device. Sensors which are working on, uh, you may not see. In I2C and SPI UART protocols like accelerometers, gyroscopes, uh, humidity sensors, gas sensors. There are so many sensors working on I2C principle. Because it's I2C, you can connect so many pins, uh, so many sensors at the same time and read their row value. Then you can, yep. Then you can uh, capture the data set and then you can maybe plot to sort to analyze or whatever. You can do that. It also has a frequency counter. It's uh, more similar to logic analyzer. Mm. And now comes to the open source project. Uh, this project is hosted on GitHub in several repositories. The first two PSLab Python and PSLab desktop apps are the soft source code related to the desktop application. And the Android repositories, we have an Android application as well, which you can connect the device to your mobile phone, which is Android. And the PSLab remote is a web server repository for the device. And the PSLab firmware repo contains the uh, firmware, which is written in C++. And the hardware contains all the schematics, which is designed in KiCad, and all the bill of materials. If you want to build on yourself, you can have all the stuff open there. And it was uh, initially it was a very basic device which comes with a two channel oscilloscope and so on and so over the past few years we've developed it to this level and the first application was a desktop application and during last year GSOC we developed the Android application and so now we are planning on having the usability to more people by developing by coming up with some solutions. So this is how the Android application oscilloscope looks like. It has all the features a normal classic oscilloscope has. And this one is the desktop application. So now let me show you some of the stuff you can do with this one. Okay, now, now this is the Now this is the desktop application and it, it has all, it has access to all the instruments on this tab, oscilloscope, logic analyzer, these are for the sensor readings and here we have the sine wave, triangle wave generator settings, 
PWM settings so programmable voltage settings here we can measure capacitance and resistance and voltmeter on six channels and the frequency counting also in here we have if we have some frequency settings for waveform generator and PWM so now uh, let me generate a sine wave with a frequency of 500 Hertz and then I'll show you that from uh, from one channel of our oscilloscope mm. I'm opening it and there are four channels here so I've connected one to the third channel so I'm already generating it so here we can adjust the time base depending on the frequency of the waveform you you want to have the maximum display on it so you can adjust it here and then you can adjust the resolute amplitude and here we have a knob you can see with that one you can change the amplitude of the generated waveform see we're planning on putting a software knob for that one instead of the hardware one and you can do Fourier analysis as well and if I go into logic analyzer about the four channels let me first generate a digital pulse that means a square wave with only two values Everyone sees oh. it. Here, mm. let's make this a bit. <laughs> so basically, yeah, maybe show the device and what you Okay. Uh, here we have <coughs> here, here we have uh, on the bottom we have a square wave generating pins. This as a skew on the bottom. I'm choosing two of them, they can be arbitrary. I'm choosing a SQ1 and SQ2. So that will generate two square pulses. And here I'm just setting what is the duty cycle. Duty cycle means uh, in a period of t uh, in a in the in one cycle how much how long the pulse will have the logic high level that uh, let me show you that in the way from let uh, for clearance i will make it 0.6 and then let me open the logic analyzer Now I have opened the logic analyzer. In this case, I'm using two channels. The reason is I want to see a phenomenon in digital pulses. That is, 
they have uh, two different features like falling edge and rising edge. These are <coughs> quite commonly available in uh, processor designing for clocks. So let me show you what a rising edge is using this one. So we are capturing the data and plotting it. So there are so many data points, so we have to zoom in. See here, uh, the 60, uh, the point 0.6 duty cycle means if we take this length as 1, this length is 0.6, this length is 0.4. That means 60 percent of the period is 5 volt. And you can see the rising edge means transition from logic low to logic high. Logic low means the there is no voltage, logic high means there is the maximum voltage. So the rising edge is the transition time. So this is the time where the rising edge occurs. So you can do many more things like this with this device. And to show you how to measure resistance, here I have a resistor with 100K, it has some tolerance, so they and uh, here we have these two pins, SCN, sensor pin, so we are connecting the two edges of the resistor to that pin. And when I try to read it, it will show you the value, correct value. Because the resistor may say it's 100K, but there are tolerance like 5% tolerance in resistors. So the actual value can be different. If you measure this from an industry grade multimeter, it will be the same value. And if I try another resistor to verify that one. Here I have a 560 ohm resistor. If I measure it, there are also tolerance. There was a loose connection, that's it. So now I surround that one. Now apart from all these uh, instruments, we have a special section in our application that is experiments. In a <coughs> school or a university you have to give the student a practical experience. They have in the curriculum they have different different experiments. Teacher will give you a lab sheet and uh, the schematics to make with all the components and the student have to make the circuit and get different readings and draw some plots. So <coughs> we have a similar approach in our application. So let me show you how a diode will looks like. Here we have the instruction to connect how it is. The schematic is not shown here. Here you can 
change the input and out uh, input parameters here it will have different curves so different Likewise, we have a whole set of experiments in different different categories. Electronic experiments are basically for high school and university level students because they are, as you can see, they are a bit complicated. Op amps, RAM generators, and so on. And for school level students, we have simple applications like measuring voltage and how to make a lemon cell. And what is Ohm's law, and so on. So that's all about our application in a nutshell. So And also we can design experiments rather than just having the experiments designed by, the, by us, you can design them yourself by selecting which are the components you need and what are the readings you want to get in what range and then you can have a simple view. And with this one you can just gather some data by connecting a meaningful circuit and then you can plot them. Now it's just a open circuit so this graph may be not meaningful but if you have a design on your mind you can have the design in this application. Okay, so what do you guys think? So, so it struck me that, that it's it would make a very good test bench platform for a lot of projects. Yes. It's not just science. And actually when I look at this I'm thinking more like if I'm building hardware and I want to automate the testing of the electronic, uh, this would be very useful, right? Because yeah, I and actually, uh, set measure point points and pre-expected value range and connect that and have signals as the input to that device and measure the outputs. Yeah. And test that. So to me, more like I don't, I know, understand the scientific aspect in the name, but to me, this is this sounds more like a great tool to test other yeah. electronic. And apart from having the this GUI, mm. here we have a, this application which is written in Python. Mm. So we have a library so called you can import it. yeah, import it, yeah. and then you can have here here we have some sample <coughs> functions here. The capture one is a function call to gen get, get the voltage reading from channel one. So if you are, if you want to, let's say you are having some application where you want to just automate this thing, so you can have a Python script running and getting data and you can process it. So what's the communication uh, between the Com platform right now? With the it's the UART. It's what you are. So it's a it's a serial serial communication. communication. Okay. And I think you guys discussed like Bluetooth at some point. Yeah, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Bluetooth or Wi-Fi as a as a thing. Yeah. To make it wireless. Wireless. Okay. Mm. okay.
and so actually um, the uh, current hardware can be um, extended with with an ESP. Yeah. You, you want to <coughs> talk a bit about that? Yes, sir. Uh, At the bottom side of the hardware, there is an uh, open socket for you can solder an ESP. Oh, you can oh. solder an ESP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, make it wireless. <laughs> yes. And at the bottom, there is a pin you can program it yourself. Uh, down there, ESP. You can have a web server uploaded to the firmware and then have the UART communication same as the USB cable. So that way you'll, you'll only have to power up the device, device and the USB and then you don't need the USB connection with computer anymore. You can have it as an access point, connect the computer to that one, then have the application running easily. What else can you... Uh, here we have uh, NRF module as well. It's uh, kind of similar to how an ESP works. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to tinker with the firmware, here we have the programmer pin set. It's an ICSP programmer. Yep. So, and uh, um, can, can you talk a bit about like um, using external sensors? Yes, uh, <coughs> we have the I2C connector in the top. With that, as I2C is uh, made to connect so many devices using only four wires, so we can connect. Mm, plenty of devices like accelerometers, uh, gas sensors, mm, barometric pressure sensors, light sensors, there are so many sensors available in the market, they are all compatible. So you can connect any amount of sensors and then get their row values, and then you can export them as CSV format. With that you can either use MATLAB or whatever the tool you prefer and you can process that data. Uh, yeah. What are the functions of the board meter? Functions of? What are the functions of your board meter? What can you measure? What meter? What meter? The board meter. Oh, volt meter. Oh, volt meter. Yeah. A volt meter can measure six different voltages at the same time. Your also a resistance and capacitance and also so current it can measure voltages up to minus 16 to plus 16 yeah, so that's the, plug into the wall socket. no not <laughs> uh, ac it's just dc or also ac uh, it can be dc or ac as long as the range is between minus 16 to plus 16 a uh, wall socket, we cannot measure. <laughs> that's so your yeah. AC is not a uh, uh, RMS. Wall socket AC is not good. How you measure AC? Wall sockets. From the wall meter. Uh, we cannot measure wall socket. Sorry? We cannot measure wall sockets. No, no, I'm saying they say I only have uh, 5 volt AC. How do you measure AC? Uh, here we have a capacitor connected across uh, this AC1 pin. It's, a, it's the same pin as channel 1. We have a, a, a 10 micro farad capacitor connected across CH1 and AC1. With that one we can input a AC wave. So measure it. The average value? Yeah, RMS. How about your blocking analyzer? Your 4 megahertz is per channel. Yeah. 
here. For your scope, do you have filtering inside? Input and out? Uh, <coughs> filtering. Or just a, the waveform will come in directly yeah. into the input. Directly, and it will amplify according yes, to the uh, setting we are choosing. It's, it's between 16 or plus 16 to minus 16 or plus 5 to minus 5 for the amplitude resolution range it will show the gain okay. what kind of power does it require <coughs> can i make it just stand alone and leave it in the garden kind of thing yes and it's a uh, uh, how would i <coughs> keep the data and then collect it at a later time for that you will have to use an ESP. Yes, without an ESP, you will need a wired connection. Okay. With ESP, you may need, you may can have it as an access point. Right. And connect some mobile phone or laptop to that one, and have the application fetch it every maybe some interval, and you can get the data. Is there a possibility we can connect to an SD card, for instance? Uh, no. Do you think you can make that happen? To collect data. I mean, sometimes you want yes. to leave it out in the pond or something like that. For so a week. Yeah, that's that, a that's good suggestion. We are thinking about how it will increase the price, and we have to oh. uh, uh, like we have to decide what is most useful for people. So it's very good that you give this feedback yeah. that would be useful for you. Uh, but it's not just the SD card. You actually need to run a server if you want to collect the data locally. Right now, we just plug in a USB either to the laptop or to the mobile phone because we say already the mobile phone has a screen, the mobile phone already has all this processing power and so we, we are collecting the data. So theoretically you could also just take a cheap mobile phone <laughs> right? and connect it to the box. Well, the mobile phones now all old ones for uh, reporting. So mm -hmm. what's the minimum requirement if let's say you want to connect to the mobile phone? Which version? I think marshmallows or above will support OTG because uh, to connect to a mobile phone we need a special cable, OTG cable. So other Samsung devices doesn't support OTG, that's the problem. But it seems to me like that what you suggested, the path of like having it wireless and a computer is yeah. as a web interface is much better, right? Because like you get a yes. computer full screen. Like you have a lot more <laughs> possibilities to, to do that than with a mobile phone. Like I feel the interface on the mobile phone is very limiting in terms of yeah, it's like more you get built out of it, right? Yeah. I don't I, like I, I because if you look at the higher range oscilloscope, what they have is like a bigger screen and more yeah. buttons and more <laughs> tactile. So but then you replace that by a computer, it's, it's better. Yes. It seems this whole path of like the embedded phone is it's a little bit different. <laughs> well, it depends on uh, the use case. So we, have, uh, we are supporting both use cases. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, um, educational and uh, like let's say scientific and startup yeah? Yeah. hardware yeah. Uh, creators. So um, actually like so for educational area, um, we were looking like at Android as like in many emerging countries and so on, they have an Android phone. Yeah. And uh, of course, like it, like in Singapore, they all have Windows. So and, and for the, for the desktop, you also need to uh, install the server. You need to run the server on the desktop. So it's not just a desktop app that you quickly install at the moment. There are options to go that way, but also we have to look at our resources. So it's not that it's just do do we do this or that. It's just the question: what do we do first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So so Android app seems to be like supporting already a lot of devices <coughs> and um, the idea would then be that we now in the next few months connect um, like a, uh, we add connections like let's say you could collect data and for example send it to a spreadsheet collect it uh, CSV but Go also send it live like let's say to Google Docs a spreadsheet that you can share with different people yeah. it's not entirely open source but like in future we will have of course Collabora office yeah. <coughs> and uh, so, right, it's just a question like what, what do we do first and, yeah. But I think I, I find really uh, interesting, so we've just been to ITE West um, uh, with William Tan 
and uh, he also said, well, this is very exciting with the sensors, because yeah. I like the uh, I like the idea of the Star Trek probe, yeah. Like we are arriving at a new planet, and um, okay, we have a choice of uh, 1,000 sensors, but some sensors we don't need for this planet. Let's let's put like 200 sensors inside and send the probe to the planet. Yeah, water, uh, atmosphere, what gas it is, and so on. So actually, with the breadboard, we can already like attach ten, uh, tens or uh, dozens of devices right now, right? So there is like. A <coughs> Uh, so you can like if you don't use the breadboard you can uh, attach one in the next version we will extend this we have four more pins actually b b because we have space we realize we have space <laughs> and uh, uh, but like already now if you use a breadboard you can attach a, a lot of devices so it's very good for prototyping or for like mm. some signs or you could like put them in a box put it somewhere and show it to a customer and say oh, this is our prototype mm. whereas with uh, Arduino recipe you have like to build everything, upload the firmware, you know, uh, fiddle around, and here you get the data straight away, and you could just like say it's my prototype, um, I'm collecting data. You have an IPC support, right? Yeah. So you could use a bus uh, with a single, just two, three wires. You don't need, you don't need additional pins. You can get just daisy chain the sensors. That's what you mean with these four pins, huh? Yeah. You do IPC on them? Yes. Uh, but the thing is, uh, breadboards can be shaky, so we can have some additional connection <coughs> on the board <coughs> itself, because we have just some space here. Okay. So we can spare that to a socket like this one. I missed your explanation. Is there another um, expansion there marked NRF24? Yeah. Is that for wireless also? Wireless, yeah. So there's two wireless solutions. There's two yes. wireless solutions. Yeah, you can. Yeah. And the firmware is already there in the chip. Nice. The only thing needed is the hardware because. Uh, yeah. Also, it's it can just be the standalone, I mean, unwired approach. Yeah. Okay. Only. We need to power up the device. That's all. It has a supply regulator. I could connect a normal battery. To yeah. This chip is using 3.3. It's all regulated here. What's the maximum? A 12 volt battery? Yeah. Okay. So one thing that we discussed in the last uh, two weeks, for example, was uh, Having like a rechargeable <laughs> battery and uh, um, like a solar panel, yeah. I mean, the question is, what do we include with the device, right? You don't yeah. need that, but you could use that and then just pull it out somewhere. Yeah, we can actually that you can connect the uh, to a small space, so so somehow you don't need like a computer yeah. to actually see what's like really going on. Yes. <coughs> Can actually like operate as a like standard device system. I mean, top up or no meter or ten meter. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't know. So, uh, I don't know. Their question. We could like uh, go um, in different ways now. For example, like uh, if you're interested, like what, what's our roadmap and how how we are planning to produce it and so on. We could talk about this, or we could also like sit down here. Um, people who are interested on the table because I saw somewhere like standing up when Fatma uh, was doing something. Mm. So we could like more go into detail and do uh, like a few experiments. So generally like uh, Roland Turner who can't be here tonight, but he will, uh, he's planning to make uh, uh, more, more workshops workshop. over the next few months, uh, also until Maker Fair. So we haven't really done workshops yet. It's like for us, it's right, like still figuring it out. And um, so we're getting uh, tonight the OTG cable uh, or, or adapter. Yes, we have like oh, two, one or two there only. Now, uh, so you can already now connect it to the to the uh, uh, laptop, right? But the beauty of uh, Android coming back there is like you download the app from the App Store and you're ready to go. Whereas with the laptop, it's a, um, uh, it's a procedure to install it, right? It's not just like click and go. Yeah. So 
So yeah, these options, or do you have anything else but one? Yes. Mm. Yes, I think that's about it. So what we're doing, like, uh, this is also Google Summer of Code project over the next few months. So if you have any feature requests, uh, um, yeah. we're happy to take them in. Um, mm. So we are uh, focusing on the Android app, but also on a um, progressive uh, web app, mm -hmm. which uh, is like uh, um, Sebastian Deckers gave some ideas here because we weren't sure how's the data processed, yeah? You, you want it, like you don't want to send it to a server and then it comes back and there's a delay or something like that. So so he gave us some ideas um, how to uh, progress here so you can uh, process everything. And um, so there are some questions, for example, with iOS. Um, it's mm -hmm. not supporting, like it's not very open. We learned uh, yesterday more details. So, so right now it's, uh, <laughs> well, it's not very open, sorry. It's not. <coughs> Supporting I the was. USB support or Bluetooth, and it's very <laughs> private to them. Oh, uh, because you need to get the device certified. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you can only like plug in what they are love. So yeah. device is the is the you are because so you guys push everything to serial, right? So you have a message format, specified message format. Is that pretty well documented in terms of like? I think our, our documentation is pretty good, but of course you will find uh, things that are <coughs> okay. good. Yeah, but like, uh, usually we, we, we document a lot. There are also a lot of blog uh, posts on our uh, uh, blog, and every repository has like a readme and all the details. Okay. Yeah. But, but where would I find the serial protocol documentation? Let's say I want to connect my Mac to it and start sending messages and receiving yeah. messages and collecting the data to InfluxDB and doing something like that. Yeah. Is that in firmware? Or I haven't worked on this. No. That's, that's in firmware. <coughs> mm. Surely it's not that much documented uh, how no. the... Hardware communication? I see, the, I yes. see it on the website. There's a Python library. Is that a Python library? Yeah. Okay. So I could just get that. Yeah, it <coughs> is essentially it's like a character based right communication. The what? For the IEEE format of the <coughs> instrument communication with standard format, the floating point and so on. Uh, what was the name of that format? Uh, I I do see. I do see. No, that was. Since no, no, serial I think a instrumentation format. The serial is and measurement equipment. Instrumentation format. Global standard. Yeah. Documentation format. No, when you send to your UART to your TS lab, yeah. what, is, what is the protocol? Usually there is a standard for instrumentation in the IEEE format. Um, we, are, we have a set of our own commands. It's like a we have first Shall categorize, okay. yeah. Categorize what are the documentation will be useful for us. Yes, that's a good suggestion. I mean, I, so there's science lab the py, right? Science lab the py is the thing you imported Python from the desktop, and yeah, it has uh, it has the Python definition for the communication in there. So, so some of the libraries uh, actually they just. Uh, Derivatives from um, XPEG eyes, so we, don't, so we didn't start that start that from scratch. Right. So that's fine. What's like it's a very good question because of course we want to stick to standards. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah, so if there's a standard. Some, some examples. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, but I um, I'd, or, or like there are some Python libraries. So. I would say probably they stick to standards, which is <laughs> open source, but 
So right now, uh, so the production right now is, is around uh, um, like 110, a bit about, about between 110 and 120 uh, um, sing dollars. Um, but like it will, like we produced a 50 in this batch, so not so many. Uh, so it will, will go down and um, yeah, so we are still like checking because it's hardware, we're a bit afraid yeah, <laughs> to <laughs> produce a lot. <laughs> so, uh, but like, uh, so, so the target would be something around $30, maybe if we can get their production cost. And um, so that would be cool. But like, if we add like SD card or something, we can't keep it. So, uh, so, 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 so our, our thing is like, we always want to add something also, but we want to keep the cost low. So it's like a constant fight with now what, what we do. It's bring. always a possibility to show a tutorial how to add. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to connect yeah. an SD card. Or if like the additional like, uh, yeah. Like probably you can have a footprint yeah. for a generic uh, folder, SD folder. Yeah, so that yeah. people could just <coughs> add on to your device. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's good to get that feedback. And, um, yeah, that's, that's it. So this pocket time. So, so they, they gave like two boxes around. So one box was uh, also with the, the <coughs> like we, we had, uh, what's, it, uh, what's it in English, amplifier, a gain to control the gain. Yeah. But actually, we just thought like we could do that digitally. Mm. So we we take it out one one less button. Mm. Yeah. And um, where's the other one? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that one we just made in, in Kiwi's office like three days ago. So it's, it's slightly smaller. And by the way, they are compatible with uh, Arduino. Um, yeah. So so if you see that here behind uh, you will see like the below the sticker there's some holes yeah. from Arduino but like our box uh, will our own box will not be <coughs> entirely compatible because we will not if it's Arduino they will have more uh, yeah. space here they will have it longer we don't have that long space and also we want to ta uh, keep only the inside um, screws we don't want to have a bigger box, so we want to make it as small as possible, the three pocket, <laughs> yeah. uh, as small as possible, so that's what we do. But anyways, you could, you could take an Arduino box, yeah. Yeah, if, you, if you want, and you can produce the whole thing yourself. So the whole schematics are online um, with the uh, uh, KiCat, K K K K K K K um, and uh, yeah, so you can just download it and, and try it out. Yeah, and uh, so we have different versions. Um, yes, because mm. like they're really different. Like we have version one, two, three, four, because they're really different. Uh, uh, like previous versions didn't have a clue about uh, production, so we thought uh, let's make it really small and we put all the um, components on, on two sides. But actually, it increased the cost a lot. So we lowered the cost <coughs> by a quarter by putting everything on one side. Mm, these are the previous version. This one is the first one. It has uh, yeah. it has all the components on both sides. This one with side modification. Can we yeah. use a Raspberry Pi with it? What? Raspberry Pi with it. Uh, yeah, well. Rah. Yeah, you can use it, it depends on what you want to do. You can use the Raspberry Pi just how we use the computer now. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Plug it together. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, so this is our start project. We really want to make this successful. So we're thinking about how to do the Kickstarter, how to do a Kickstarter campaign and so on. Yeah. You would buy it? <laughs> <laughs> I would, for the last two years, I've been sporadically giving 
lessons to secondary school, school children on the micro bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's a different space altogether. The micro bits for introduction, but <laughs> they are already connecting to a variety <laughs> of sensors and actuators. This is targeted for a different <coughs> space of yeah. people, right? So um, it has to have a little more than the micro bit and the micro bits already has got uh, things that I asked for earlier yeah, um, yeah. like wireless connectivity <coughs> easy programming and stuff like that so I think there might be some yeah. room for improvement before you put it out on Kickstarter of course there's a lot of yeah. room for improvement it's also <coughs> one thing that we said is like you save a lot of time mm -hmm. so you, don't, you, you can connect your um, sensors, for example, very quickly yeah. and uh, and get data. So instead of <coughs> with micro bit, you have to program it first. So, but like and program it, but then it, it can be made into a standalone project. <coughs> you leave it out in the garden, having micro bit talk to another in a mesh form or hopping form, right? They can get data of their garden, uh, potted plants and stuff <laughs> information about it, right? So yeah. I was hoping that this could do something similar or even more more than uh, what I could do with a micro bit. So yeah. that's why I asked maybe <coughs> there are some things that we can improve on. Yeah, and micro bits are a pretty um, relevant piece of um, device given to secondary school students today. Sure. So I, I think I, I would like this to be more successful it's than a, a premium, micro bit. It's a premium option then, yes. if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do others want? If you have the clearly documented protocol, yes. I can even use the micro bit to take the time, right? control this guy as well, generally. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the micro bit got serial yeah. communication as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think if we can write like because there's already a Python library, right? So just just going that way, I think it's more software, right? It's on the software side, like developing the features so that it <coughs> integrates with the existing hardware. We've heard the Raspberry Pi, like a PC, like other platforms. It's all about like people want it on their platform, but you're not going to be building all of that. So you need to get people to maintain these this support for their hardware. So, I think it's that direction that's uh, it's pretty good. But I think, you know, because you can, you can build it for a lot of different people, but I think you already have a good sense of what kind of application you want to do, right? Which is measurement mm. and, and kind of test and kind of these things. So, what, what scenarios can be covered, like thinking more about that, I think is fine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, our <coughs> so this is our first thing and our next thing is uh, <laughs> so, so one sensor that we want to get connect yeah. is our uh, <coughs> our friends new new fox Pieces. This is also hardware. It's like a bit um, <coughs> messy, and, and like the, the device is pretty cool, but <coughs> you know, control run. So we just get, get this from from a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, uh, to <coughs> to measure brain waves. Mm -hmm. So we are looking if we, instead of having this thing that they made kind of a mm -hmm. little like chaotic way, uh, um, if we can support, for example, with yes, rocket science lab as well. <coughs> so because the the great thing what they did is they really um, have medical grade um, accuracy. Uh, accuracy. So there are like some devices also in Singapore and elsewhere, mm. and relatively cheap. <coughs> Um, but like they don't get such a quality of brain waves. So here with a few sensors you get very high accuracy. There's this amazing Japanese guy who's just like into it <laughs> really, like for 30 years. See, the guy who always wears the ear. No, no, that's, that's uh, <laughs> another one. <laughs> no, no, it's not him, it's, an, it's, a, it's another guy. Oh. Yeah. Cycle. Who's also yeah, very much it. into <laughs> aliens and everything. Yes, very <laughs> aliens. <laughs> so it's really funny. 
Yeah, but like, yeah, it's cool. <coughs> so, yeah, this this one one way we could go, for example. <coughs> so, we want, uh, basically, it's not just about building one device. We want a team, we want people who work together, and we want to push this idea of uh, open source hardware out there as well. So, um, like, if other people produce it, we also win. They will contribute back to the project. They will say, this and that. So, that's, that's our idea. Move ahead. So, basically, if you have this idea, <laughs> it's also online. Yeah? So, um, yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. So, now it is, what's the time? 8.10. Yeah, so I don't know if you if you want we could like uh, um, have partner maybe you could show us a few more things how you actually connect that and if people want to know sit actually around the table also sure. we could do that yeah or if you have another suggestion yes what could you like to say oh yeah so for the the Android and the desktop versions is the functionality the same yes or is there function only on desktop. No, no, both the functionalities are say in both applications, but uh, for now the maybe the approach will be a bit different. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we don't have all of it in the Android app yet, yeah. but uh, uh, over the summer we will yeah. we we'll complete it. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, we <coughs> we have now with some of code we have we have five people who oh. work on it. So okay, students not like you know, but still we have a clear plan. So. Everything will be supported in the next few months, and you can already like the current uh, app is already on the App Store, mm -hmm. so um, it's still in testing, but you can find it already. So, so how do you see the collaboration with like because uh, in China so we have we have a couple manufacturer of open source hardware, mm -hmm. uh, DF Robot, CC, things like that. I I think you guys haven't approached them yet, right? No, no, we produce it in uh, with Seek Studio and Mount Studio. Okay, and, yeah. already. Yeah, so they are, they are, of course, they are relatively expensive. But when we, so, um, yeah, we're checking out others as well for larger quantities. So the, the idea would be to have the Kickstarter at the end of the summer. That's what to say, and, and like to, ready for Christmas, Europe, and and uh, I don't know, like we haven't figured out how much, like uh, what makes sense, because we're usually rather conservative. So if anyone has feedback about this project and yeah, what do you think uh, makes sense? It's good. Do you have feedback? Yeah, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking how, because uh, I, I know a couple of electronic uh, like uh, manufacturers in 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 Shanghai, right? yeah. they're pretty good for like Shanghai, Shenzhen is very good for large quantities, yeah. but Shanghai actually for smaller quantities uh, batches is good. Yeah, I have a contact for the Batam SMT yeah. guy, so I think it's quite low cost, but he doesn't do testing, but he assembles a lot of them. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, what a number I can pass it to, to you. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I think it would be pretty pretty good to have like an automated testing procedure <coughs> shield type of thing because if yeah. you're moving to production that should be one of your side projects is actually having having some sort of, of test harness you can put on the board because once it goes production comes out, especially in China, like you get a lot of defect. So you want to make sure you have a systematic way to test all the features, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that, like, if you put one of this, I think put one of the student on that would be a good investment. Just test harness. <coughs> if you have someone that does hardware and software, like, and at, at the same time, it's, I mean, it shows off the feature of the, the, the hardware because you have like it's a oscilloscope and a signal generator. And I, like I saw it a little bit at the beginning of the presentation, right? You generate the sine wave and you measure the sine wave on the same device. So that's kind of testing you could make. You should make systematic and then have software to check that, you know, the, the whole hardware is working correctly. Because once you move to production with 10,000 units, how are you going to test it? You can't just 
ship it without casting <coughs> sign. It's super important uh, aspect of that of a project like that. Thanks for signing up as a mentor. Really yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes, definitely. So we have testing, we have software testing, but uh, I think hardware testing we don't have it yet, right? We test everything. Yeah. So I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. a big difference. Yes. So any any feature requests that you uh, <laughs> this time? Raspberry Pi. <coughs> what? Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. So connected like have every tutorial and something and everything like just to connect it. Could use together with us and if I something like that. Good. Yeah. But that should shouldn't be too hard. I think it's a documentation problem, right? It's just yeah. someone sitting down and plugging because the hardware is already all there. So it's not it's not that it would be very challenging. But that, again I think it's a it's probably more documentation, right? Yeah. Like showing off all the possibilities, mm -hmm. having a some sort of Manual. So you're what you're saying is that you're targeting people who already have a background in Python. No, no, no. <laughs> Why? No, documentation is documentation, right? So all right. it's it's also for the feature of this thing and like the the, the like I saw a little bit like they have uh, some framework to create experiments, but I think if you're going to do this with kids, like they need like the whole step like walk through, you know, it's the because you're actually the, the target here is teachers, right? Like you, you said, showing it to kids. You get this piece of hardware. Teachers are always like, okay, what do I do now, right? Like what, what kind of things can I do with this thing? So you need to give them the experiment. You need to like, you have the potato. Let's measure voltage on the potato when the lemon and like some other things, right? And things like that. That's what they want to. You know, there's a good opportunity here. Yeah. This year is the first year in Singapore where O levels have a computing subject and it's done in Python. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you can have a tie up with schools for. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they start off at secondary three. Yeah. So last year they started secondary three. Those students in secondary three this year is <coughs> doing the O levels. Yeah, that's so that kind of schools stuff. only. It's all going to be down to content. I think the hardware, all the features, yeah, stuff content. like that, like it's fine, it's good, it's great. But now it's all about what you've documented as experiments that kids can complete, right? Mm -hmm. Led by teachers. So yeah, that's why we were just at ITE and yeah. yeah. So we have two. In Chinese, at ITE working on this. The We're few months. doing doing experiments, documentation. Yeah. Doc oh, that's very good. Yeah, just like that. So, so they focus on sensors. They don't focus on Python at this mm. project. So they they just connect one sensor and like, okay, at first you take this wire, mm -hmm. and you plug it in there, and yeah. So they have a lot of different sensors already. They have everything there, and uh, they can just like go through and do it. So I hope. Yeah, it seems like the William Tan. He's really pushing for it, so it seems like it will work out. Okay. Right. Um, so, and then we work together with Dunman High School mm -hmm. on the Post Asia projects anyways, but I'm not yet clear if they do Python, what specifically would they do? I think like usually they have like some some project that's already like ready-made project like Microbit or something. So, so I'm not exactly clear what specifically would they make. I mean, if we that if we if you could could give us like a question and that we can and then we can follow the question. So what we did uh, just last week was also we wrote down a lot of questions, yeah, because Padma just comes and shows the device and says it's great. <laughs> you can do many things. And then like uh, uh, like the people like you, right? They say, oh yeah, I can see it. I totally see it. But like a lot of people say, well, I'm interested in the subject, but I don't know. No. Yeah. What what does it mean? Many things. What well, so many things. Yeah. I, I so <laughs> help in some way is the, the measurement aspect. Yeah. Okay. I, I see this is full of features, but certain terms in measurement we have to be clear. Yeah. yeah. So obviously your bow meter only can do VC measurement. You cannot from what your the answer you give me is not really AC measurement. So we just have to be clear in the it is documenting the spec of the function. Yeah. Okay. And I can give you some advice. Yeah, that would be oh, good. Cool. 
oscilloscope is measuring AC, yeah. but a true AC voltmeter is different. Okay. Yeah. So those are things that have to be clarified. Yeah. So your oscilloscope is two megasamples per second. So your what is the bandwidth of your oscilloscope? So for professional, uh, it's uh, like there's some information missing. Yeah, yeah, some major information on the measurement side need to be clear. Yeah, yeah. So how 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 do how would one do that? How would one go ahead with that? So basically, uh, write down what we have or put together what we have, and then I, I do ask you a lot of questions. Yeah. So uh, okay. so so for example, like yeah. Well, is that your target? Is that your target market, like professional, like everyone? Well, no, professional. You, when you're talking to school, uh -huh. you you have to be quite clear in certain aspect when you start talking about mention. Yeah. I, I know it, there's a difference between data logger and taking sensor data and the measuring instrument. Yeah, so yeah. if you if you start as a data logger, then it's fine. I, I think yeah. you are there. But so, so what I think they need is textbooks. Like they need the textbooks and they need the teacher's guide. And that's what. No, no, I, I'm not even going there. I'm just saying no. when you when you put this up, like what in your website the yeah. function, yeah, yeah, yeah. we just have to clarify what the yes. measurement part of it. Yeah. And look, that that is not a lot of work. Just just to give you some feedback. Yeah. Still, my 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 question would be, how much would you put that work in a professional way? Already, we have startups who say, oh, cool. I can use that here to measure some these in, in my hardware. Mm -hmm. I don't need these devices. And the partner said earlier, uh, like different devices could like add up already. Whereas here we have one, but like I don't know myself enough to to say, oh, it's good enough, or you know, yeah. or, or something. It is missing. my my opinion. Many years in the measurement field, <coughs> it's not up to professional yet. This is yeah. most of the DIY. Yeah, yeah. But if you really want to go further, then we have to look into the metrology, the calibration. Of course. You know, yeah. that those aspects, then we can get some clearer specification. Yeah, yeah. And it will be, I, I think it's still useful for some lower frequency use. Yeah, yeah. Possible. We just have to clarify the specification. Sure. Because uh, there are, on Seed Studio, there are devices that cover some of what we cover, but they. They marketed at something very professional, but like. Uh, okay, you can send me the website and figure out how much. Right, so, okay, good. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, awesome. Okay, thank you. Okay, yep. yeah, thank you.